Welcome to our fourth video in the series of tutorials on C. This is Gauri Naik speaking for Logics Computer Academy. In this video, we are going to see what are the loop control structures like the for loop, the while loop and the do while loop. Let's start with the for loop. Why do we require the loop statements? If we have a block of code which has to be repeated many times, it need not be written that many times. You just have to put it into a loop control structure. Let's see how this is done. Here is a flowchart which shows us how the loop is executed. Let's take a counter and initialize it with the value of 1. Next, we check whether the counter is less than or equal to 3. If it is, since it is 1 now, it will print the word logics. Now we increment the counter by 1 so that it goes back to checking whether the counter is less than or equal to 3. Now the counter is 2 so it prints logics again and increments the counter by 1. This time the counter is 3 so it meets the condition which says counter should be less than or equal to 3. So again it prints logics and the counter increments by 1. Now it does not meet this condition. So it exits the loop and the program stops. So here we see that with the help of a loop we have managed to execute some statements within the loop as many times as it meets the condition. Let's see how this is written in a program. So this is the way we write a loop statement. Here we have used the for loop. The for loop consists of three statements as you can see since there are two semicolons. The first statement is called the initialization. The next statement is called the condition and the third statement is the updation. It's not necessary that you have to write all these three statements. You may not have the initialization. You may do the initialization before the loop. So this could look like this. Now here the counter has been initialized to 1 which means that the initial value of the counter will be 1. Now the checking for the value of the counter will be done. If it's less than, let's take it as 3. If it's less than or equal to 3, only then it will go inside the loop and execute all the statements which are within these curly braces. This is called the body of the loop. So it will print these words. Next the counter will be incremented by 1 and again the checking will be done. If it's less than 3, it will again execute the statements in the loop and so on. So this is, this is the way we use a loop statement. In this loop statement, this loop is going to be executed 3 times since the counter varies from 1 to 3. So let's run this program and see. So here you can see that the words Logics Computer Academy have been printed 3 times. Let's see how we would write a program to find the factorial of a number using the for loop. So here we have written a program to find the factorial of a number. We have initialized a value called f by 1. We'll be taking the number from the user in n and we will be using i as a counter. What we need to do is shown in the next flowchart. This flowchart gives us the flow of logic to find the factorial of a number. We take a counter called i which is initialized with the value of 1, another variable called f which is again initialized with 1. Let's take it for granted that the user has input 3 in n. The n will be input by the user. The first thing we need to check is whether i is less than or equal to n i is on 1 and n is on 3 so it's less than n so f and i will be multiplied and again assigned to f. 
So here we show these three variables. F is equal to 1. I is equal to 1. I is less than N. So F and I will be multiplied and the value will be assigned to F. So this is the first step. Now the second step would be I plus plus. Again the checking for the value of I compared to N will be done. So now I is on 2. It's still less than N. So F and I will be multiplied and the value will be put back into F. So now F is 2. So here again I will be incremented by 1 and again it will be checked to see whether it's still less than equal to n. So I will now become 3. It's equal to n. So F will be multiplied with I and again assigned to F. The value 6 now will be assigned to F. I will again become plus plus. That means it will be I will again be incremented by 1. So it will become now 4. 4 is neither less than nor equal to n. That is equal to 3. So it will exit the loop, print the value of f which is 6 and stop. So this is the way we would find the factorial of a number. So here is a simple algorithm. We initialize f with 1. We take the value from the user and we run the for loop in the following manner. Let's see this with the help of a program. So this first statement shows the initializations and the declarations of the variables. We ask the user to enter the number and we take the number with the help of the scanf function from the user. Now we start with the for loop. If we write these two statements inside the for loop, they would have it the program would have gone wrong because here the for loop requires the value of n before it starts so that it can compare it with i every time. So we take the value of n from the user and then start the for loop. Also any statements written inside the for loop are repeated as many times till they meet this condition. So the initialization statement, the condition and the updation which we saw earlier and the statement inside the for loop to multiply f with i and assign it back into f. We have written the printf statement outside the for loop since we want to print this only once. Let's run the program and see first. So it's asking us to enter the number. Here it's printing the factorial. Now let's see what would happen if we put the printf statement inside the for loop. So this statement now is inside the for loop. Let's run the program and see. You can see that every time the loop runs and f is multiplied with i, it prints the value of the factorial at each step. So we don't want this to happen. We want the printf statement to be executed only once and so we put it outside the loop. So this is the simple for loop. The question that comes to one's mind is, what if we don't write these statements at all? You can do that. This would make the loop an indefinite loop. Since there is no initialization or condition or updation, the loop would go on indefinitely. Let's run this and see. So you can see that it goes on printing the words Logics Computer Academy indefinitely. So this is one of the loop control structures. There is another loop control structure called the while loop. Let's see how that is written. Here in the while loop, the initialization is done before the loop. The condition is part of the while statement and the updation is done inside the loop. So the question that comes to one's mind is, why would I require the while loop at all? Sometimes it may so happen that you may have no initialization or no updation. You may just have a condition 
and till this condition is met, you would want the loop to go on running. One such example would be as follows. Now here is a program in which we have asked the user whether he wants to continue or not. If he says yes, then it would go on printing the word logics, else it would exit the loop. So here we take a variable called answer. We ask the user to input yes or no. If he inputs yes, then it should continue with the loop, else it should exit the loop. So here we initialize the answer with a yes and with the help of the while loop, we check whether the answer is equal to yes. The to upper is a function which requires the header file ctype.h. It converts the answer that the user has given to uppercase so that you can match with this uppercase letter. So in even if the user puts a small y, it will match with the capital Y since the answer that he has input will be converted into capital and then checked with this Y. So if it matches, then it will execute the loop. Here it will print the word logics, ask the user if he wants to continue and then take the answer as a character. That's why we have written percentage C. Now you may have noticed that there is another command over here, f flash stdin. I'll explain this later. Let's see the output of the program. So here it prints the word logics and asks you if you want to continue. If you type yes, then it will print the word logics again. If you keep on typing yes, it will go on printing the word logics until you have typed some other letter other than Y. So even if I type an H, it will exit the loop. So this is what happens with the help of a while loop. Here you can see that there is no, even though there is an initialization, there is no updation. There is just an initial value and the condition, but no updation. Now what is this F flash STDIN? Let's comment this out and see how the program runs. It's asking us if we want to continue. We input a yes and then it prints the word logics again but it exits the loop. Why did this happen? After typing the Y, I also press the enter key. The enter key is a character. So what happens is that this character will be scanned and it will be taken as the answer by the user and since that answer is not a yes, it will exit the loop. The enter key has to be flushed out of the buffer and that's why we use the f flush stdin command which flushes the enter key out of the input stream buffer. So then it's ready to take the next character as an answer. So this is the way we use the while loop. Now there is another loop statement which is called the do while loop. In the do while loop, the while appears after the loop. So it appears like so. And the word do appears before the loop. Let's not initialize this and see what happens after we run the program. So when you run the program, it has already printed the word logics. It's asking you whether you want to continue or not. You say yes. It continues with printing the word logics. Again, you say yes. So it will go on printing the word logics till you say yes. When you say no or with any other letter, it will exit the program. Now here, we have seen that it has entered the loop without any condition. This is a major difference between the while loop and the do while loop. The while loop is called an entry control loop. Since the condition is checked, while entering the loop. If the condition is not met, then the loop will not be executed at all. So the loop is executed only until the condition is met. And hence, we had to initialize the answer with a yes or else it would never have entered the loop. 
because if we had removed this, this answer would contain some garbage value which would not have matched with this condition and hence it would not run the loop at all. Let's see this by running the program. So as you can see, it has not executed the loop at all. So when we write the while loop, we have to see whether it meets the condition. Only then the while loop will be executed. And that's why we initialize this with y so that it enters the loop the first time. In a do while loop, the condition is not checked the first time. It enters the loop, it executes the loop, and then the condition is checked after executing it once. And because of this, the loop is executed at least once. So let's remove this and see whether it executes the loop at least once. Here you can see that it has printed the word logics, which means that it entered the loop. Since there was no condition, it printed the word logics and then it asked us if we want to continue or not. If we say no, it will execute the loop. So when we said no, it did not match with the condition which was checked after it executed the loop once. So this is the difference between the while loop and the do while loop. The do while loop is called an exit loop because while exiting the loop the condition is checked and the while loop is called the entry control loop because the condition is checked before it enters the loop. So these are the loop control statements. There are two important statements called the break and the continue which we'll see in our next program with which we can control how a loop works. Let's see what the break statement is all about. Here we have a loop which is running 5 times. So we initialize the counter with 1. We check whether it is less than or equal to 5 and we update it by incrementing it by 1 each time. Now when the counter reaches 3, we have said break. Break will help us to break out of the loop and it will break out of the loop and come to the next statement after the loop. Continue is a statement which skips the rest of the loop and brings the control back to the beginning of the loop. So here when the counter is 3 and it encounters the word continue, it will skip all the statements after it and go back to the beginning of the loop. So in this case, the loop will be executed only twice since we broke out of the loop when the counter was on 3, although here it says that the counter should vary from 1 to 5. Here too we have said that the counter should vary from 1 to 5. But when the counter is on 3, it will not execute the statement. It will go back to the beginning of the loop where it will increment the counter and again check for the condition. So this loop will be executed 4 times which means that it will be executed when the counter is on 1 and 2 and 4 and 5 but not when the counter is 3. Let's run this program and see. Here as I said earlier, this loop would be executed only twice since it breaks out of the loop when the counter is on 3 and here it prints it 4 times since it does not print it when the counter is on 3. So this is the way we work with the loop control structures and the break and continue statements. Hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our videos. Thank you for watching.